Hey and welcome to Sekiro the Ultimate Guide. Now if this is your first time watching any of these videos then I'd ask for a minute or so of your time just so I can explain how to use this guide and what it's about. Essentially this guide is entirely complete and it will help you get a full platinum for Sekiro. It covers all NPC quests that are relevant, all items, a best path through the game and also specifically strategies to get you through the game with the path of least resistance. Remember that this guide is supposed to be used as a full guide but you, could, you can use it for specific areas if you need to but if you're confused about how you know we are at a certain point or doing a certain thing, chances are the answer is in a previous episode. When it comes to boss battles, we really only show you the easiest method that we could find based on our perspective. If you want to fight the boss differently, it's up to you in this case to find a different and harder strategy. Now, if you have a good tip or have a question, leave them in the comments and I'll add them to a pinned post. That way this guide can constantly get better or more efficient. So if you have a question, check the pinned post first. If you do have a tip, please leave a timestamp so I can find the bit that you're talking about. Also, please bear in mind that this guide is taking me literally hundreds of hours to make, so if you enjoyed the video, the least you could do is give it a like. If you really enjoyed it, perhaps give us a sub! And if you really, really enjoyed it, you can support the channel on our Patreon if you're feeling generous, or perhaps sub to us on our Twitch, that's another good option. Now on to the guide. Welcome back to Sekiro the Ultimate Guide, and today it is Mibu Village, which is the second part of this depths bit, I guess. And um, this bit is quite long, but also pretty simple. And if you're having trouble with the boss, boy, have we got the technique for you. So we're just gonna, you know, as we're going along, pick up the items as obviously- I assume you're gonna ignore most of the enemies because they just keep spawning. Yeah, so the enemies here do infinitely spawn. And so we're ignoring all of them. You're correct. Like weird vegetable people. Yeah. Come out of the ground. They're not even good for farming at either because they give you barely any experience or uh, like money. So, so all, all I was doing here is like, I guess it's like vaguely easy to lose your bearings in this area. From this like tree, there's like one item to one side and like a pacifying agent. Below. So there's this NPC here, which really doesn't do anything. He's got um, a basket. He's Mikalash. He tells you some expositional dialogue and that is it. So if you care about the story. This isn't is, he this the is your guy? chance to indulge? Isn't he the basket head Mikalash guy? I'm, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure he is, so Sekiro is a sequel to Bloodborne. I mean, it could theoretically be within the same... He asked for eyes and they gave him sake. Bastards. So there's a cock on the roof. Don't let <laughs> this happen to you. Uh, you know, I had there was, fo there was footage of that not happening on the other one. I was just like, you know, I'll just keep it in. <laughs> yeah, good call. That's good. I was aware that the fucking cock was on the roof and it still got me. So we're gonna just use this as a, like I guess like an anchoring point, just so we we know where we are. Fistful of ash in here, useful item, very useful for the boss coming up. Actually, <laughs> you'll see why. Um, so going up the hill to the left is progress. This bit ahead of us, like the kind of graveyard area. Uh, we're gonna come back. We're gonna go round and come back the way there's a gourd seed in that area, and uh, don't forget to pick up these emblems because they are just free. You've got like 200 of them at this point. Uh, so one, one um, bit of footage had loads, and then the other one had like fucking barely any. It was weird. Maybe you just really sucked on one of them. Maybe. So we are gonna crouch through this part, and this is this is kind of like a farm area or whatever. We can use the ninjutsu puppeteer, or the, rather puppeteer ninjutsu to like mind control this guy and then he'll go and fight all those guys even though you could just run past them anyway which is what we're gonna do. This is more funny though. Yeah, it is more funny. And also actually another of those like shade guys show up now that I think about it. So that's like actually four times that they show up. Uh, maybe Or maybe, maybe this is the fifth time. I can't remember. Point is it's never relevant. So. We're getting those two items and boy oying up here. And then there's, there's like... A sake and uh, you can poison yourself. That was the two items you got. Yeah. So this bit requires like a little bit of nuance, I guess. So use the shuriken and kill the guy that is like above that guy. Oh, a fully charged shuriken. And then this guy... They, like caught wind of it, so now we're just waiting for him to like reset. But we're going to use the puppeteer ninjutsu for this guy to be a distraction in the graveyard because the bit that's coming up with the gourd seed, there's like all these enemies and it's... He's, he's like the best character in the game to 
ever, ever ninjutsu. Oh yeah, yeah very, it's very good. so fucking good. So we're picking up that Miba Bull in the now, and it just goes mental with his big bell. Yeah, he, he rings that bell. So we are coming into this little ditch area. Now, some enemies can like come out the ground and grab you, and it's a total fucking pain in the ass. I so think you can. I think you can see them. They're on. Like, it's like similar tiling to the gun fort, I think. Uh, I'm unsure. I wasn't able to pick up on it. I but. think there's like a little rock formation that you can sort of avoid. It looks like a little rock patty. Well, Something. once the um, the tarot guy is produced enough of a distraction, we are just going to quickly run out and grab the spare items. There's a gourd seed, a mebu balloon. I think it's just another mebu balloon, but that's what it is. I can't tell from this footage because it's all like cropped down because of the preview. Yeah, so uh, there's I some black there gunpowder, that was the last item, and then that is it for those items. But the point is, we got a gourd seed and that's obviously like good, so we're not going to pass up on that. Now we can just come up to this part, um, which is like the second last bit to do before the boss, because then there's like across the lake, I guess, to do. So we're just coming up here. And there's like an item down here, and then when we drop off, it gives us a vantage point to use the shurikens to kill vaguely annoying enemies in the like the, the hut to the right here. So we can kill that guy because see when you go into the hut, there's like these like hag ladies, and they like make a charge for you, and they're so fast, and it's hard to like like sometimes they just get you. So just be be well. Standing still for years, and they've used the last of their life energy for that final burst of speed. Legit, man. Because Legit. they think you've got their sake. <laughs> well, but I mean, I do have a lot of sake on them, so this is what happens when you like deal with alcoholic women. It's a bad mix. Or specifically, alcoholic like spirit women. Yeah, these these guys are kind of like more uh, deranged zombie Aye. sort of women. <laughs> Although, what's the difference? Am I right, lads? Anyway, moving on to the next part. For some reason, I've spent a lot of time just sitting at this uh, idle. Uh, you with three skill points to spend as well. Yeah, but I mean, generally we're just saving up for like the end of the video. At least one of them granted to you from the, um, what's his name? The Purple Ninja. Yeah, yeah, basically. Well, it wasn't entirely, but a lot of it was. So there's two cocks here. Let's just hack them down. I mean, every enemy dies with like a flurry of our arms. But the next part that's coming up actually, we do just like avoid a bunch of the enemies. Um, Again, they infinitely spawn. Yeah, and then also like a like a corrupted tarot or something shows up and you don't really want to fight that and you can't like sneak around it. So all we're gonna do is just straight up like make a beeline through this area to pick up the items. One of the items is actually useful because it's like a unique upgrade item that you need to specifically- resin, isn't it? Yeah, and you need that for the the flame vent, I think. I remember my disappointment upon picking it up and realising it was not a consumable item. Um, which is odd, actually, because a lot of the time everything in this game is a consumable item. So I'm actually, I, personally, I'm happy that it's not a consumable item. No, I was wanting it to be so that you had like a flame buff for your sword because the only way to do that now is to use that projected skill. Sure, yeah. So we can just use like a homeward idol from here, but after we get the f the the pine resin, we repel up the side of the mountain and just get that last item, and then we just uh, go back here. Because it's time to talk turkey. I can't remember why it is we come here at gourd this seed. point. That's it, yeah, it is the gourd seed, good point. You can also give her a drink. Yeah, uh, like I said, uh, we've mentioned a bunch of times, you can give drinks to NPCs, that's what that option is for. She's they, wild on a night out. And they just give you extra dialogue. She gets. You should see her in the temple in the morning after she's been like, oh man, last night I was fucking sloshed on that dragon sake. <laughs> so the next boss that's coming up is Odin, and this boss can actually be pretty challenging, completely optional might add, but it is quite challenging. However, it's also not challenging because you're going to see exactly what we're going to do, <laughs> Uh, and we basically even fight the boss. Um, what you want to do is you want to bait the boss down into this little lane here. Do you know this? Do you know this one? Uh, no, but I know the fistful of ash one that's hilarious. Oh, so that's Oh not... no, I know the ceramic pot one that's hilarious. So you can't do that one anymore, but you can oh. do this. And if this gets patched or whatever, I will... Oh, you're breaking her leash. Yeah, so yeah. you can break her leash. She comes this far, right? Which is crazy. But what you want to do is you want to break her leash behind this rock here. Is she going to get stuck on the rock? Yeah. Wow. 
It's sick. Now, there's another boss it's in the game where stupid. we do the same technique, but for some reason, like, it is literally on the cutoff point. Now, when bosses like this reach their aggro leash, effectively you can just wail on them and, uh, <laughs> yeah. Because they don't try to attack you back, they only try to go back to their, like, resting point. But when it's trapped behind a rock, you just do this and uh, they die. She's a ghost. She could just vanish through the rock. You'd think, right? Don't know what happened to the camera there. The other way to defeat her is just to fully... She is a total deflect fight if you want to fight her legit. She is just a total deflect fight and you can then like jump on her head a few times. Um, your choices are typically you can get in a few hits or you can heal. You can't really heal while she's doing... Um, like when you can't really make distance to heal because she has very long range gap closes. Yeah. And yeah. they're very quick. So your best time to heal is like at the end of her combo string. But yeah, you, fighting her normally, you just deflect and then jump on her head and you'll beat her in like. But I still find it quite difficult. That, however, I don't find difficult whatsoever. Well, I mean, that's not a challenge at all. And I'm sure, hopefully, they'll patch her out because there is, there is a patch coming, admittedly. But I, I doubt at this point they're, they're not going to fix anything in the game. I was fucking hope not. What's the patch even for? Uh, it gives you the boss rush mode. Yeah, but I, I doubt they're going to fix anything. So the this is the last chance we can get uh, for getting the iron thing. Essentially the shield prosthetic. We need to get it now because if we don't get it now after we defeat the next boss, uh, it shifts the time forward in the game and then this guy uh, goes away you can buy his item from the box at the temple next to the guy that doesn't die but it's more expensive so that's why we're buying it just now i think that's where i got the anti-air death blow yeah it might yeah, have been the shrine been. box because he also sells it yeah. and goes away it's still there yeah probably because i remember looking at it and i'm like i don't care about this no enemies are ever in the fucking air and then I get to Senpu Temple and the enemies are never on the fucking ground. <laughs> <laughs> it's relevant for one area and only one NPC sells it. So it's vaguely relevant for the session in Warriors, but there's a, a better way of doing it. Oh yeah, it's pretty good in Fountainhead. It's, I, I used it a lot in Fountainhead. That's yeah, why I got good yeah. at it. Oh, one of the very few chests in the game that aren't behind a hidden wall. So that's the... Divine Grass, which we're going to use, again, all these like big one-shot healing items we're going to save for specifically the end boss. So just ignore that guy, like, imagine fighting just running. Whatever, guy. bro. Yeah. So what you want to do is you want to run up quickly and then you want to backstab this guy with a bell and then immediately puppeteer and jutsu. That way he'll take care of all the other enemies floating about while we do the little item run before the boss. Yeah, he's just going to go ham. And the cool thing is they all aggro on him as well, they didn't ignore you. And then we defy the laws of physics. And come in here. And this actually has like a bunch of really good items in this area. Now this guy gives you a bunch of... Uh, what do you call it? Um, carp scales later on. So, like, uh, max out his dialogue just now, that way you don't need to do it later. And when you come back to him during Fountainhead and then you give him uh, Fountainhead water you reset and he'll become uh, that's what it was I thought his quest line was something to do with Saki but it's the Fountainhead water yeah yeah. that's what it is and then he like turns into like a snake guy or whatever and then uh, you kill it and you get some skills but anyway I mean just follow what we are doing you know there's nothing to really explained here but we should be close to upgrading our HP I think after the boss you get another prayer bead or we might have all the prayer beads just now I'm actually unsure. I think um, it's after the boss. I think you had two. If the boss gives you a prayer bead, then obviously wait till after the boss. But if that was the last prayer bead you needed, then just double check and then you can go back and increase your life before the boss. But you, you honestly, you don't even need it because you can do the next boss without even getting hit. So I can't wait for you to see this method because I know for a fact you've never seen it. What, the Fistful of Ashes one? Yeah. Oh, have you? Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's been around for a while, I think. It's, it's really, really funny. Now, this boss can be vaguely challenging, but using this method it is like... I would be shocked if you weren't able to do this first or second go, honestly. Yeah. So, they are, like, not aggro, which is fine. Now, we need to equip Snapseed, 
Festival of Ash and the uh, confetti. The confetti and long spark. Now you can do this without the confetti, but the confetti just helps speed the process along. It makes it quicker. You do regular damage to ghosts instead of half. So we're equip equipping the uh, spark, and then you just go spark, hit, hit, spark, hit, hit, until you run out of emblems. Because the interesting thing about this boss is he doesn't gain any like immunity to any of the items or prosthetic tools. So, you, like I said, it's just spark, hit, hit. R2, R1, R1. R2, R1, R1. Then, once you've run out of emblems, you go up to use the snap seed. R1, R1. His snap seed stuns him. Now, you can only use snap seed three times. So, remember to switch to the, to the Fistful of Ash after this. So, then you just use uh, Fistful of Ash, R1, R1. And then that is how you defeat this boss. Yep. He is that easy. If you were using Divine Confetti, you'd have killed him in half the time. You wouldn't have yeah. even needed the Fistful of Ash. It's true. It's true. So, yeah. Now I knew all about this one, yeah. Fistful of Ash was like the item I seen people use. They didn't use the Spark or the Confetti. They just ah. used Fistful of Ash and Divine Confetti. confetti. Yeah, sure, yep. sure. Yeah, I guess you could do that as well. It's actually, it's insane. I would do, do that. that. I would do Divine Confetti and Fistful of Ash because then you don't spend the Snap Seeds, which you get far fewer of. Uh, that's true, and then you don't use any of your emblems as well. So I guess yeah. that is also something. So run in here, getting one of the. This is one of the three items you need, or it's one of the two items you need to make the incense that Kuro is trying to make. Apparently, he's trying to make some kind of incense, which opens the path to Fountainhead. Who knew that? You're going on a spirit journey like the ancient engines. Yeah. So now we are upgrading, we've got some skill points, we're getting projected force, which is necessary for the next part. You need projected force right now. If you don't have it, get it. It's only one skill point. Uh, it's one skill point and the skills before that lead into it, but you should have enough. So then we can enhance attack power, which is also going to be vaguely useful for the next the part. Corrupted monk memory. And now we are going back to the temple to... Probably prayer beater gourd seed. No, we, we, oh, no, we got the gold seed, so I guess we are now... Oh, you're uh, equipping the iron thing, the shield. Ah, yeah, right, so now we Is are... Is the shield? Yeah. Yeah. So, loaded umbrella. Now we need to upgrade the umbrella for the next part as well. It's one of my favourite items in the game. So, you need to use exactly how many coins we are using, so you can work that out. So that was 900... So that was... 4,500. Yeah. 4,500 seni. Now, we also need to buy some items. If you don't have any spare gold... That's but 4,600. But if you've picked up the gold that we've picked up, you'll still be able to do this. You'll have to go buy the items as well. So, we are getting the flame vent, then the, the upgraded loaded umbrella, then we need to upgrade that, and then we can upgrade to the lilac umbrella, which is extremely potently key. It now, is the, one of the most handy tools in the game because it just totally rinses all of the ghost bosses. Yeah. I think it's it's basically almost impossible to do them without it. Shisman warriors hate it. Find out why. <laughs> <laughs> so now we, um, with the money that we have, we can still spend what we have to buy the necessary upgrade items. But this is what I mentioned in the first part. You will almost certainly have the black gunpowder or whatever it is we need to buy just now. Luckily, we have the money to do it. Um, you need 1,500... So you've spent 5,600 in total so far. Okay. Uh, make that 6,100 in total so far. So scrap iron, right? We need 10... We need 10 scrap iron, but if you've been sucking up scrap iron the whole game, you will probably have this and don't need to use it or I rather don't need to buy it and you'll have spare coins, which will be relevant for you later on in the game because you can then buy the, the mask fragment that you need. But ultimately, this guide, you can't pick up enough coins to do everything we do and buy the mask fragment, but you should be able to do it if you've been sucking up coins and banking them the whole game. But with the coins that you do have to this point, you can do all this anyway. So as long as you've not spent them on anything frivolous. Upgrading the axe, upgrading Sabi Maru, upgrading the sparking axe. Yep, which is, this is just the best weapon in the whole game. You unfortunately do have to upgrade Sabi Maru to get it. Yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately. But the cool thing is, is like I said, the game does present you with exactly enough coins to this point in the game to do everything we've had to do. And at this point, you could effectively stop upgrading anything. It is now 
you have free reign to do what, what you want you by want the point. You want Alapi's weapon at least, just one. Uh, so I think we upgraded the Mountain Echo as well. I'm not even sure if we got it. I, I can't even remember. But... You didn't. You don't have the parts for the Mountain Echo at this point, I don't think. But the point is, is the next part of the guide is us wrapping up doing all the headlessesses. And there is actually Headless a li- eye. Headless eye. Uh, there is actually a bit of a technique to that. So um, if you want to know like the easiest way of doing it, then tune in for the next part. But obviously you're following the guide, so obviously you're gonna. But hopefully this part of the guide was uh, pretty helpful. And it's also just kind of interesting that you do have all the resources that you need. It's, it's, it's kind of interesting because Dark Souls was like that, Dark Souls 2 was like that, Dark Souls 3 was like that. It just felt like you always had just exactly the right amount of things to... to to get what you wanted. Well, if you went everywhere. Aye, aye. Yes. But if you were just like, nah, blitz through the story, it was like, good luck. But anyway, we're going to leave this part there. Thanks a lot. Hopefully it was helpful, and we'll see you in the next one. Catch you guys later.